if you started with uh, Bitcoin on layer one, uh, is decentralized and secure and can't be broken after every nation state attack possible and every bit of FUD uh, possible, except for Bitcoin is repricing all currencies. Mm -hmm. So the, so the IRR of Bitcoin for the last 15 years is 45%. So, so that means my rate of return hurdle needs to be plus 45% or I won't make an investment. And I can't find anywhere with an existing system houses, anything where I can make a rate of return of 45% a, a year. So you would just invest in Bitcoin. Bitcoin burst onto the scene as a revolutionary force, aiming to break free from the grip of governments and banks. Powered by blockchain technology, it promised a world where money moves freely, securely, and transparently, without middlemen or hefty fees. Beyond finance, Bitcoin's disruptive potential is reshaping industries and sparking innovation, offering a glimpse into a future of faster, cheaper, and more inclusive global transactions. This revolutionary potential is further highlighted by a riveting interview with podcaster Brandon, where famed investor Jeff Booth unveiled his take on the looming insolvency of the global financial system and Bitcoin's unique role in it. Booth painted a stark picture, a global balance sheet of $900 trillion, burdened by $400 trillion in debt. Should this debt become worthless, asset values could plummet, wiping out much of that wealth. But here's where it gets interesting. Booth suggests that dividing the remaining value by Bitcoin's fixed supply of $21 million could make each Bitcoin worth around $43 million. Unlike traditional assets like real estate, Bitcoin isn't tied to a failing system. Its scarcity and resistance to manipulation position it as a powerful store of value, especially in a world where inflation eats away at currency value. Bitcoin, according to Booth, is the ultimate hedge against financial chaos. Watch clips from the interview for further insights into Jeff Booth's conversation with Brandon. Please like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more content. Enjoy the video. Balance sheet of the world today, 900 trillion. Um, that has $400 trillion of debt, that balance sheet would not be $900 trillion if the $400 trillion of debt was insolvent. But the $400 trillion of debt is insolvent, right? So in other words, the, the, all of the assets that you're mispricing because you think the debt is solvent are included in that asset value of a, of a balance sheet. And imagine you, just you're inside that balance sheet and you have your assets of your house and your car and everything else that are all some total and you're dead against it. Mm -hmm. If you think you're, if you have a whole bunch of clear assets, then you can continue to spend based on that, right? So you think your wealth would be included in that. So your spending power, how much you think you have is based on that. Now, if all the debt became insolvent tomorrow and it all, it all failed, then all of the house prices and all of the money in the bank wouldn't be there. Um, and everything would collapse to, it, let's say this, it sure wouldn't be a $900 trillion balance sheet. <laughs> it might be a $100 billion balance sheet because there would be nothing left because it's the entire thing is based on, on pieces of paper having that uh, 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 and, and those pieces of paper, that debt being solvent. So now if you divided that 900 trillion to think in purchasing power, by 21 million, you would get about $46 million, uh, uh, $43 million per, uh, per, uh, per Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. um, and that, and now make up for lost coins, how many lost coins it would be higher. It would be higher than 43 million. But then if you, if you realize that in five years, that $900 trillion balance sheet won't be 900 trillion. And the debt won't be 400 trillion because if it was, if it was the same, the entire thing would collapse because it has to grow exponentially to be able to keep it solvent. In other words, money manipulation has to grow exponentially to kill, keep that system solvent. And you're measuring everything from that money manipulation. So, so call that a two quadrillion dollar balance sheet at the time with maybe 1.4 billion or 1.4 quadrillion being debt, maybe more, right? Yeah. As that explodes, yeah. um, is, is essentially you're driving inflation, destroying currency values to be able to do that. It might be higher, um, then measure Bitcoin at that time and the purchasing power right, of that Bitcoin, even if it had doubled 
hadn't actually doubled. It's just the balance sheet you're measuring it from. So it's it's trying to it's what I was trying to do is say what is the terminal value of Bitcoin in today's purchasing power, and that was that's only one side of that kind of uh, that's only one side of that argument. The other side of that argument is the forty three. If if you just said nine hundred trillion today was fixed. 400 trillion was fixed today and 21 million is fixed today, today, then, then, then because the free market is deflationary and exponentially. So with technology and everything we're moving, then the purchasing power of the 43 million expands in, infinitely over time. If you started with uh, Bitcoin on layer one, uh, is decentralized and secure and can't be broken after every nation state attack possible and every bit of FUD uh, possible. If you realize that that's, uh, that's already happened, it's behind us. And there's no way to, to attack Bitcoin sufficiently enough that you could centralize it. Then you would have to, from that point, control layer two. We were, we are early in the innings of all of the exact same attacks happening on layer two. And most Bitcoiners are, 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 are actually, are actually making those attacks stronger because they're getting caught up in the misinformation of them. Jeff Booth highlighted Bitcoin's reputation as a powerful investment, showcasing its impressive 45% return over the past 15 years. He suggested that to achieve even higher returns, Investors should focus on building around Bitcoin's infrastructure and technology, generating new value, and expanding their Bitcoin holdings. This approach can lead to venture-level returns, as demonstrated by companies like Sailors, which leverage their operational businesses to increase Bitcoin's worth. Booth also pointed out that this strategy diverges from traditional venture capital models. Unlike those models, businesses can achieve profitability faster while adding Bitcoin to their balance sheets with minimal dilution. He further argued that compared to real estate, seen as a currency short, Bitcoin stands out as a far superior asset, offering significant advantages in a rapidly changing economic landscape. In other news, Ethereum, the second largest cryptocurrency, suffers from significant market problems. Its price has struggled to break through the $3,000 resistance mark and is now trading at $2,468. The lack of movement is troubling, particularly given the recent debut of Ethereum ETFs, which was supposed to increase demand. However, institutional investors have been withdrawing from these ETFs for eight days, resulting in a large cash outflow. This drop in institutional interest is most likely due to the growing supply of Ether, which has switched from a deflationary to an inflationary tendency. Furthermore, introducing two chains, which used to scale the Ethereum network, had an unforeseen effect it reduced Ether's revenue. This decrease in revenue changed its overall worth, adding to the price drop. Ethereum's price has remained below $3,000 since August 3rd. If Ethereum can maintain its position above this level, it may rebound. If it fails to do so, additional corrections may be necessary. The Relative Strength Index, RSI, is 42.05, which is neutral, indicating that Ethereum is still in a downtrend. Conversely, the Moving Average Convergence Divergence, MACD indicator, displays green histogram bars above the neutral line, indicating that lying positive momentum. The cryptocurrency's ability to maintain key support levels will be critical to determining its future move. Ethereum's price behavior over the next several days will be key in deciding its short-term fate. As we conclude, what are your thoughts on this interview? What are the potential risks to investing in Bitcoin and building on its infrastructure? How can they be minimized? Please drop your thoughts in the comments below, share this video, and hit your thumbs on the like button. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.